Hello, you guys, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. Before we get into the material at hand, I just once again want to shout out my sponsors, Astia. I have been doing Astia now for a little over, what, two weeks, and I have felt such a huge difference in my health, in my energy. It's really made a very positive impact on my life. And if you're interested in purchasing a SIA, please contact Jay from Spiritually Raw and he can help you figure out what products you need and explain to you more about the medical side of a SIA. Before we go any further, I again also would like to take a moment to thank all of my patrons and my producers. Without you guys, this channel simply would not exist. You guys have been the sole provider for me going forward with my research and with this content on this channel. And so I thank you guys all from the bottom of my heart. If you would like to join our Patreon community, there is a link down in the description box below. And with that being said too, we had some questions last last week pertaining to this material that I'm working off of. This is again, is the Hathor material. It is uh, translated and channeled by Tom Kenyon. This is the second of Tom Kenyon's books that we've been through. The Magdalene Manuscript was the first. And we will be going through next the um, Octurian Anthology. That's the next Tom Kenyon book we're going to be going through. And we're in the addendum section, which, again, is my favorite because it's kind of like the history. It's like, you know, the drama and the, <laughs> and the juicy, juicy tea of it all. So we're starting today on page 216 with inter technology versus outer technology. And this, all of these parts to the Hathor material can be found in the playlist called Understanding the Magdalene. So if you are new to all of this stuff, I highly, highly, highly recommend, first of all, getting these books for yourself so that you have your own reference material. You can read them yourself. And then second of all, um, just going back to the playlist and just re-listening to everything and um, and then obviously create your own opinions uh, based around what you are hearing from these books. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Page 216, Inner Technology versus Outer Technology. Ideally, the use of inner technology and outer technology is in balance. There's a fascination by humans today with gadgets and external technology, many believing that external technology will deliver them into higher consciousness without any work required. This is a fallacy, of course. So, <clears throat> med beds, we've been telling you guys there is no magic med bed that's coming that you're going to be able to lie in and then all of a sudden everything's going to be fixed. That's not how this works. Again, believing something like a med bed is just going to come in and fix all your problems is looking for an external source to save you. And if you are still relying on an external source or a person, a thing, an organization to swoop in and save you, then darling, you're nowhere near ascension. From my understanding with the med beds is they will only work as much as you've worked. So they're only going to help you lose the weight that you've actually healed within you. So if you have done, if you, let's say you're overweight, and you've done zero work on yourself to figure out why you're addicted to food, the med bed's not going to work. But if you've done the work, if you've done the therapy, if you've done the shadow work, if you're starting to exercise, change your eating, then maybe the med bed will work. So I think that's really, really a great analogy for inner technology versus outer technology. Your inner technology your inner understanding has to work before any type of external gadget will work for you. I hope that makes sense. It's just like people who are sitting around just waiting for the revaluation to happen. Stop waiting. Do what you got to do now. You're just waiting for death at this point. If you're just sitting around waiting for someone to step in and save you a white hat, then you are never going to be saved. You are plot twist. You're the white hat. All right. The rods of power we discussed earlier were simply an assist to the initiates of ancient Egypt. Exactly. So yes, way in the beginning of this book, they talked about they talked about the rods of power. All right. And that's exactly what this is an assist. It's like the ASEA that I'm doing now, which helps your cells regenerate. It's just an assist to allow the body to do what the body wants to do. It does not replace 
my exercise, my uh, journaling, my meditation, eating healthy. It does not replace any of that. It assists it. Okay. The actual movement of the vital force up the spine was created by the initiate's inner intention, focus, and will. The rod simply coaxed subtle energy into a movement intended by the initiate. Personal mastery is not easy at any time. No spirituality is easy. If you're coming into a spiritual practice to find ease, you're going to be real surprised. You have to go through the darkness. You have to go, as Magdalene says in her gospel, you have to descend. You have to descend into the gunk of who you are through your traumas, through your triggers, through your mental attachments. In, or you have to like go into that until you can come out the other side, until you can ascend. You can't ascend if you've never descended. Of the general population of ancient Egypt, less than 1% would have dedicated themselves to becoming initiates. There were those who took the outer roles of priests and priestesses, but those who truly chose to be initiates and take the path of soul accomplishment to the highest realms were in the minority, less than 1% of the population. I can absolutely believe that, even just in the yoga world. I mean, look at the yoga world today. 99% of the yoga you see is bullshit. The real yoga, so many people would rather take the easy road and like go to a teacher training and pay like thousands of dollars when that's not even legitimate. You have to go to India and go to a shala in India to be legitimate. But people won't do that because that's hard. Going to India is hard and it takes years of shit and shadow work to finally be authorized. They'd rather take the easy road. That means nothing. That just feeds into the ego. Of those initiates, less than 10% achieved the highest levels of understanding the mystery schools were teaching. And of the remaining 10%, less than 10% of them achieved full and total self-mastery. This does not mean that the other initiates failed because mastery is something that extends through all lifetimes. Yes, every we see that in the Sophia Code. Every lifetime builds on itself. The idea that you have failed if you don't make it to full self-mastery in this lifetime is to us a preposterous belief. As we view it, your current life is simply one embodiment in time and space and one expression of your ku, your soul. Indeed, every subsequent lifetime is another expression of your soul. It is like growing petals on the flower. When the petals have been strengthened and are matured sufficiently, then the blossoms open and reach the final attainment, which is what the lotus flower is for yoga, going through the muck and blooming. The process of arriving to the full blossoming of self-mastery is in truth part of the journey. So we are uncomfortable with saying that over 90% of initiates in ancient Egypt failed because it, in our understanding, they were reaching for mastery. It is simply in the timing of things that during one embodiment, they did not reach the final attainment to which the mystery schools were leading them. In subsequent lifetimes, however, many of them did finally reach self-mastery. And that's something Guruji used to say, especially for uh, uh, those of us Westerners who actually ended up in India, like did it, just got on a plane and went to India and left everything behind. He would say that it was obvious that we had done this in the past. We were coming to finish what we had started. Our soul was called to finish what we had actually started. Regarding the use of energetic implants to assist ascension. If you receive something that is not harmonically suited to be a part of you, it is not only superfluous, it is also potentially dangerous. You have within your being everything that is needed to ascend the spiral into the highest elevated states of consciousness. They are all within you in seed form. Y'all, like how many different types of spiritual paths have to tell you that like you're it? Like there's no magic pill. There's no med bed. No white hats are common. It's you. You have everything in you that you need. And that is your power move. That's good news. There is nothing that needs to be added from outside. All that needs to be done is to cultivate the soil of your being so that the seeds can emerge and give fruit. This is done through love, compassion, and discernment, reason. Regarding the human voice, within the sounds of your own voice are the keys to innumerable 
worlds. Sound signatures. A sound signature is similar to a signature on paper. When you sign a check at your bank, the signature must be nearly identical to your original signature on file. If it's a match, you are giving access to the account. It's the same with sound signatures. All emotions, thought forms, beliefs, and energies have a sound pattern that may contain one or more frequencies of vibration. These vibrations or sound patterns are expressed by an individual or sometimes mechanically so that the sound signature matches the fundamental signature you get at residence. And then that emotion or thought form emerges into consciousness. For instance, the emotion of sadness has a sound signature that most humans would recognize as crying. The act of crying or the sound of weeping is recognized universally as the sound signature for sadness, grief, or loss. But if you suppress sadness instead of experiencing it in the moment, the vibration energetically coils up inside your energy field, waiting in dormancy for an opportunity to express itself. At the first opportunity, the sadness suddenly uncoils, spirals out, and you find yourself crying. As the energetics on this plane increase, more emotions will be triggered in yourself and others, and often you will not know where they come from or what has triggered them. Oftentimes, you may not know what to do with them. Our suggestion is this. If a strong emotion arises, find an appropriate space and make the sound of the emotion. Let it move through you. If you feel like crying, cry. If you feel like yelling, yell. And this is definitely something that we have spoken about a lot, especially with the Shadow Work Challenge and on Aquarius Rising Africa. This is why I tell you guys like to do kickboxing if you're angry. Find a way to express these emotions. And if you've got to go sit in your car and scream into a pillow, you do that. If you've got to cry, if you've got to close the door and just take some moments to yourself to cry, cry. It's okay. You have to let the energy out. If you don't, it's just going to stay in the system and it's going to end up transmuting itself into something else that ends up hurting yourself or someone else down the road. As the energetics on your planet increase, the more emotions will be triggered in yourself and others. And often you will not know where they come from or what has triggered them. Oftentimes you may not know what to do with them. Again, that's what we are focused on in the shadow work challenge so i'm having you do so many different forms of exercise because exercise is not just a way of weight loss or to put to you know punish yourself into getting into a size zero jeans it's a way to transmute energy so that's why we have the kickboxing and the bar and the yoga the different forms of movement so that you have an understanding of what that's doing within the energy of your body so you know how to transmute and process different feelings that come up. When a strong emotion arises, remember that there is a vocal sound with it. If you can make the sound of the emotion, let yourself feel whatever it is. Even if you don't know what it is, you will have helped yourself in the process of vocally expressing a strong emotion you will often begin to have an understanding of what that emotion is about. Which again is why journaling is so important when you're doing these exercises, when you're doing, when you're letting yourself cry, when you're doing the kickboxing, when you're doing all of this journaling with yourself, nobody else is reading it, is giving you a base understanding of where everything comes from. You're pulling it out of yourself, right? No one's telling you where it's coming from. You're the one figuring it out yourself. For those fearful of making sounds, if you feel that you are unable to make sounds around others, then we suggest you go off somewhere alone. Many people are alone in their cars when they drive, and this is a great place to make sounds. You can also make sounds outside of nature or in a room where no one else is around. Embarrassment about making sounds is fundamentally an emotional issue. It's an energetic block because the flow of creative energy in the throat chakra wants to be expressed. If you are holding back from making sound or from speaking out of embarrassment, it is probably due to an earlier emotional experience of being repressed or made wrong for expressing yourself. It may be a whole pattern of holding back your truth and your energy. This type of emotional block needs to be resolved because if you are unwilling to make sound using your vocal cords, then you are choosing to constrain your energy. This is a wide topic, and in practice, things would be tailored to the individual rather than giving broad sweeping information. However, we'll employ a broad sweep and an attention to address the subject. As we said earlier, the vitality of your planet is decreasing due to the loss of minerals and the decrease of oxygen levels. What you do to a 
what you can do at a biological level is to increase your levels of minerals and oxygen. This increase will help many conditions that are now be, being experienced. Colloidal, colloidal minerals can be very helpful in this regard. There are also products and substances that increase oxygenation of your body. Eating more light foods will help the entire process, specifically sprouts and young tender greens, before they become mature. These hold within themselves a very high level of complex proteins and minerals that will help this process. So eating more live foods with the enzymes undamaged will assist this process of mineralization and increase the absorption of oxygen. This requires your soil to be healthy and pure, of course, and at the same and the same is true for water. At the physical level, these are a few things that will help greatly, but it is best to engage in a synthetic synergetic process of doing everything you can to increase your vitality, including the clarification and evaluation of your beliefs and interactions with others. As you strengthen your ka and your life force, other aspects of your consciousness will be strengthened. You will have more focus. You will have more energy and stamina. At the emotional level, there is another aspect for you to consider. Negative thought forms and dis discordant emotional energies being expressed in the planetary mass consciousness can degrade your life force as you become more sensitive to your own life force you must protect your energy your life energy is precious and you shouldn't give it away to just anybody take your power back you should keep it for your own enhancement and for those who are close to you you shouldn't give energy away frivolously, and you shouldn't take on the negative emotional patterns or the emotional neediness of others. As we previously mentioned, this planet is a school for emotion, so it is a very intensely emotional place where emotions abound, and this will only increase as your planet and your entire solar system enter more fully into the ascension process. Those who give their own energy away to take care of others will find their energy depleted. This depletion of your energy comes directly out of your call. As you become more sensitive to energy in general and to your own energy in particular, you will be able to sense when someone is drawing on your energy and when you're giving it away. That's why in the law of one, it's very quick to tell you that martyrdom is a negative polarity. There has to be equal exchange of balance of energy. Emotional caretakers need to be especially aware of their life force. You can so completely take care of another person emotionally that you will have nothing left for yourself. This is not, this is not spiritual enlightenment or, or attainment. This is a misuse of energy. Giving away your life force may seemingly come from a place of compassion and wanting to help others. But if you have drained yourself in the process, then you have damaged yourself and this is not good. Yes, guys, that's why I get so upset when people think I should be teaching yoga for free. No. So you ex that is so fucking selfish. That is so selfish. So you expect people like me to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning, do my practice, then teach a three-hour Mysore, then go work a full-time job and be of service to you without you paying anything? How the fuck am I supposed to keep the lights on and the shala doors open? It's an exchange of energy. I have to pay my teacher in India. I would never accept tutelage from him for free. And before people, a little bit of, of knowledge goes a long way. People will say, well, people in India used to not pay. Yes, they did. When young boys would go to gurus like Krishmacharya and ask to be taught by them, but they didn't have money to pay, you know what they had to do? They had to move in with Krishmacharya and be a servant. Give him massages whenever he wanted to, wanted you to go to the grocery store, clean his house, clean his, uh, do his laundry. They were not getting that yoga for free. They were paying for it by their service. If you don't have money and you want to learn yoga, go talk to the shala owner, the teacher. Usually there's a karma program where you can come in and clean the bathrooms or clean the studio to get yoga for free, but it's an exchange of energy. If you are someone that thinks people should be subservient to you for free or you should be subservient to others for free, as they just said, let me read this again for those in the back who did not hear. Emotional caretakers need to be especially aware of their life force. You could so completely take care of another person emotionally that you will have nothing left for yourself. 
This is not spiritual enlightenment or attainment. This is misuse of energy. Giving away your life force may seemingly come from a place of compassion and wanting to help others. But if you have drained yourself in the process, then you have damaged yourself. And this is not good. Organ resonance. Each organ of your body, indeed every cell of your body, has a resonant field of energy. Even the atoms and the molecular structures that compose your cells have their own resonance. But when you get to the level of the cells, you start to have very complex overtones and resonance. And when you collect millions and millions of cells together to create tissue and organs, you have a very complex sound vibrational matrix indeed. For example, one resonance is that of your heart in relationship to your kidneys. The fundamental resonance establishes a balance between the connection of these organs. And we're speaking of an energetic connection, not a functional connection. Western medical science would say that these are two very different functions. However, from an energetic standpoint, the heart emerges out of the kidney function. The Chinese are very clear in their understanding of this. When the kidneys are strong, the heart can be strong. When the kidneys are weak, often the heart is weak. A healthy body's fundamental residence establishes a balance, and each of your organs has a resonant field of energy. And that is the harmonic relationship to all of your other organs. To be in health is to literally be in harmony. The resonance, the sounds, and the frequency that are emitted by your various organs must be in harmonic relationship to obtain and maintain health. Disease occurs when something goes out of the harmonic relationship. The increasing intensity of planetary energetics is a tremendous challenge to all biological systems because as the planetary vibratory rate increases, everything is increasing in its vibratory rate, clear down to the molecular and atomic levels. So the cells and tissues that make up your organs are also being agitated and due to emotional issues, some organs will transit up faster than others. For instance, the liver often holds suppressed angers. The kidneys often hold suppressed fear. Yes, and kidneys are also connected to the knees. So if you have knee issues, that's fear of the future. The lungs often hold suppressed grief. And there are other organ emotional relationships as well. But we all know this. We've talked about this a lot on this channel. If your entire system is starting to go into vibratory rate in response to the planet's increasing vibratory rate, unexpressed emotions held in different organs of your body will keep these organs at a lower level of vibration while the rest of your system is going upwards. Another reason many people are experiencing an increased in intensity of emotions is because the organs are holding those emotions are literally discharging them in order to catch up with the vibratory shift. Emotional expression. In the mystery schools, when an initiate came in to be reviewed before the next initiatory phase or ritual, he or she would be scanned by the priestesses and the priest. He or she would be scanned for energetic and sound signatures indicating his or her emotional balance. If the initiate was balanced enough, he or she would be allowed to proceed to the next level. If the initiate was not balanced enough, he or she would be sent back because to go higher up the initiatory path without balance would be dangerous. If you are not exercising, if you are not making sure your food is for your dosha. You are not in a place to ascend. They speak about this in this book at the beginning of this book. You cannot be like massively overweight and ascend. You cannot be weak and ascend. Your body has to be strong enough to handle the rise in vibration. You would not pour a gallon of water into a paper cup. The paper cut would break and dissolve. You would have to pour a gallon of water into a very strong bowl that could hold it. Same thing with your body. No excuses. I don't want to hear any. There, there, are, there are literally no excuses. Yeah, I don't care if you're in a wheelchair. I don't care if, you, if you're sick. We have a student at Ashtanga Atlanta who has several palsy. And that man comes in there and works his ass off every single day. And half of his body doesn't work. If he can do it, you can do it. If you're in a wheelchair, you work your arms. You I mean, how many cycling events are there with people in wheelchairs? Like, there is no excuse. It is your own laziness. I, I take no excuses. 
If I can get up at 3.30 in the fucking morning and work out, so can you. No excuses. All right. You cannot remove negative emotions. You must transmute them. Again, yes, it's like doing the shadow work. Doing the shadow work, you're facing your negative emotions and you're working through them. No one's going to come and just bippity-boppity-boo remove them for you. That's not the point of being human. You're missing the point if you think that's going to happen. You can't wish them away. You can't think happy thoughts to wish them away. You have to deal with them. That's true spirit. How I'm speaking to you right now is true spirituality. It's how my teachers speak to me. There's no pussyfooting around. There's no enabling toxic positivity. It's real and it's raw. And you have to feel things. You have to move. You have to sweat. You have to get uncomfortable. It's the only way. Many humans believe that negative emotions and negative experience needs to be plucked out. And that's not truly accurate because these negative emotions and experience are an expression of the individual's fundamental perception of reality. When you transmute your negative emotions, your energy system comes into balance and there's nothing to be plucked out. The energy that has been congested is now free and contributes to your evolution and your illumination. Using sound to stay healthy. The fundamental reason for de degenerative disease, as we understand it, is the devitalization of the earth. At the beginning of time, the vitality of the earth was very strong because of the glaciers. Glacial activity and the grinding and transformation of the rocks into minerals. The waters were highly mineral mineralized. The soil was highly mineralized and the oxygen levels was higher your scientists have estimated that the present level of oxygen average it averages around 18 percent whereas it was 30 percent several hundred years ago with this tremendous decrease in oxygen levels the amount of prana available has also decreased one might ask why this is happening it is happening for many reasons but in the terms of human behavior, it is happening because you are decimating the forest, even the rainforest, and you are polluting the ocean so that the plankton and the other organisms which produce oxygen in the oceans are stunted. As a collective, humans are so disconnected from the earth, they are destroying the very bedrock of their existence. Because most people are running around independently pursuing whatever they are trying to achieve in their personal lives, there is often little little cultural appreciation or contemporary understanding of the need to honor the earth mother. Consequently, there is a mass decimation of those fundamental generators of oxygen, as well as a depletion of mineral reserves through agriculture. The question of sound is a complex question because there are specific frequencies that will help with specific health problems. And many of your researchers are now uncovering this therapeutic use of sound. In the coming decades, sound therapy is going to be a very big part of your medicine. And that's true. It has turned into a big part of our medicine. It is true that you will discover how to use one frequency for one problem and another frequency for another problem. And ultimately, you will learn how to use sound to assist and heal those who suffer. But it is equally true that simply learning these methods and using them will not remove the deeper cause of much disease, which is your disconnection from Earth itself. The disconnection must be healed. In terms of self-healing, you can apply it to the law of fundamental tone. A fundamental tone rules over all the other tones in relationship to it. In music, for example, if you push the damper pedal of a piano so that all the strings can vibrate freely, you strike the C note, all C notes above and below that note you struck will resonate. They will begin to sound through the law of synthetic resonance. And this is the law of the fundamental tone. So a fundamental tone can set off residents in other octaves. What this means, practically speaking, is that you can go to a place of your own consciousness where you are healthy, radiant, and have the attributes that you desire. By making the sounds from the higher state of consciousness on a regular basis, you can transmute conditions in the lower octaves because you have sounded the fundamental tone. If you have an unhealthy situation, a condition to be changed. You go into a place in your consciousness where you don't have that condition. When you find that place, you repeatedly make the sound expressing that positive quality through your own voice. By doing this over and over again, eventually will have a positive effect. Sometimes even 
an immediate positive effect. Editor's note. The fundamental, the law of fundamental tone as used by the Hathors refer to specific tones you can create with your own voice that match specific mental emotional states that correspond to healing states of body and mind. These fundamental tones are unique to each individual and differ from person to person. In other words, there is no fundamental tone for all persons. By using the method the Hathors describe, you can shift physical conditions in yourself through the power of your own voice and intent. Using sound during emotional emergencies. There are two ways of working with sound that we would recommend when dealing with large group of people in an emergency situation. One level of action would be audible and one would be inaudible. If the group is coherent enough to understand and accept audible sounds as a viable tool, then you can simply go into the space within yourself that is ever unchanging, calm, peaceful, and where the feeling of connectedness and love exists. It may be challenging to find that space within yourself while going through a chaotic experience, but it is still there because it's the core of consciousness itself. You then simply get in touch with that coherent place within your being and make sounds that express that calming energy. As people hear those sounds, they will register that calming state through the law of residence. If you are in a group or situation where audible sound is inappropriate, you can make the sound silently, then radiate them outward from you into the group. This will have a more subtle F effect, but will still be a positive one. Editor's note. The use of audible sound in a group situation is highly complex phenomenon that can easily change the belief system of others. Generally speaking, it is preferable to work with sound in group situations via silent sounds rather than sound that is audible unless the group is clearly understands and accepts the use of audible sound as an emotional. On being the sound-filled vessel hearing a CD. Hearing our catalytic sounds and feeling them in person is a superior way to receive the vibratory information because more activation occurs when your physical body is in the same space where the sounds are being made. However, just hearing the sound on either a video or audio system will still have a powerful and positive effect. We do our work primarily through sound vibration. The cognitive pieces we are giving are less than 1% of what we offer, but it is important because it creates context for transformation as we view it. The misuse of sound. Sound has been misused in many civilizations. Atlantis was working with free energy, and sound was a crucial part of this. They talk about this in Tartaria as well. However, the Atlanteans became overly mental and disconnected from their own biological roots. As a result, they became very unbalanced and destroyed themselves dis despite their advanced technologies. Though not generally known among the populace, sound is now being developed as a weapon of war. And unless your global civilization gets back to its senses and honors the earth and all life, your civilization could create something similar to what happened in Atlantis, which we know we're mirroring what happened in Atlantis right now. Energy healing. If a healer channels a healing force of energy without judgment about the person being healed, the healing will be pure. If the healer holds judgment about the person being healed as the healing force is channeled, then the healing won't be pure. Something of the healer's judgment will be communicated energetically to the one being healed. This would be a disservice, and if the healer cannot suspend his or her judgments, at least during session, it would be best if the session were canceled. The thought form of judgment can have negative impact, even if no words are spoken. When the one you call, Jesus of Nazareth, knelt down and washed the feet of his disciples, it was a great lesson. Here we have a master being who brought himself so far up the spiral of ascension that he could get on his hands and knees and wash the feet of beings who were absolutely unconscious compared to him. This was part of his teaching, and it was not done out of ego. It was done out of honoring and celebrating of the essence of those beings. It was done without any judgment. That is the model for an ascended being. A truly ascended being has no trouble washing the feet of those who are less spiritually developed. Sound and vibration. It is our understanding sound or vibration is the foundation of all reality. While you experience matter as solid, we experience as energy fields that vibrate or oscillate at different harmonics. Consequently, it is possible for you to change harmonics and shift out of matter into energy. It is also possible 
to shift back from energy into matter when you understand how it is done. The ships that we originally used for space exploration and for entering our solar, your solar system were based on sound and vibration. It is a very ancient understanding in our culture and goes back to our roots. We have known this and operated this way for millennia. And I think that's a great place to stop that section. We'll pick up next week with healers and the healing.